Florida Republic Congressman Matt Gates joins me now from Capitol Hill. He was one of the 193 Republicans who voted against impeachment. So, Congressman, do you expect that President Trump will bring up impeachment or uh, since we understand from the White House that's not likely to happen, do you think he will have some veiled comments about it? Uh, the president may give a glancing blow to impeachment, but fundamentally this speech is about a renewal and revitalized in America, an America where we've taken millions of people off of food stamps and seen seven million jobs created, an America where we're finally not dead money in trade deals. And certainly I think the president will talk about our military and our veterans and uh, the renewed sense of American nationalism that his work has brought to our great country. And we found out tonight that uh, Senator Susan Collins of Maine will vote against removing President Trump from office. There are, is still, I know, an, a lot of interest coming from the White House and uh, from your caucus as well to try and encourage some of those more moderate or conservative Democrats to vote against uh, impeach or vote against removing the president as well. Are you having conversations with any of them? What would you, what would be your appeal to them? Well, Lana, we would remind them that the beginning vote that started impeachment was a bipartisan vote against this very process. Democrats joined us and no Republicans validated what occurred in the House of Representatives. And so it would seem only appropriate that the end of this national nightmare of impeachment could also conclude with a bipartisan vote of acquittal. Uh, I think that Senator Doug Jones represents constituents who'd largely believe the president should not be removed from office. So I think he's He's likely feeling some heat. Uh, and I think also Senator Manchin, uh, who represents West Virginia, also sees that many of his constituents are supporters of the president and don't believe that this activity would warrant any type of removal. But again, tonight, the president will be talking about this great economy we have and certainly the Gallup poll showing 63 percent of Americans approving of the president's handling of the economy gives the president the yellow brick road to have a very successful night in delivering his State of the Union to lean into those economic successes where the American people clearly see the impact of his administration on the wages and jobs and prosperity of our nation. And Congressman, I know you are back in Washington after just getting off of a plane from Iowa. You were in Des Moines and you had been campaigning there as a surrogate for President Trump. Do you care to weigh in on your on with a reaction to the caucus results so far? Well, congratulations to Bernie Sanders and Pete Buttigieg. They appear to represent the rising brands in the Democratic primary. And while we don't know which of them won quite yet, we certainly know who lost. And that was Joe Biden. The former vice president's principal campaign message is that he was so electable. And yet here in the first contest where voters actually got a say, he didn't even make the medal stand. He didn't even make the top three. So I think we'll be seeing the death rattle of the Joe Biden campaign coming up in New Hampshire. And I don't really know what his campaign about if it's not his electability. Would you and your fellow Republicans like to see that death watch happen? Is that what you're saying to me right now? <laughs> Well, I, I'm just reporting the news here. I see the former vice president of the party who got in the race leading in national polls with all of the big bundlers and establishment folks, with all the members of Congress endorsing him, and the guy can't get on the medal stand. He doesn't break the top three in Iowa. He had Iowa basically to himself while these senators were back here in Washington, D.C., functionally chained to their desks listening to the impeachment trial, and the guy couldn't score layups on an uncontested court, so I don't suspect he'll be doing much better in New Hampshire. All right. I'm going to give you a chance to weigh in on another thing. Uh, President Trump was just tweeting, and I don't know if you've seen it, but he was suggesting that uh, Congresswoman uh, Alexandria Corsia cortez would uh, take on Senator Chuck Schumer and beat him. And he said it in more colorful language than me. I wouldn't want to face Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez in a Democratic primary because the Venezuela wing of the Democratic Party is taking over right now. If you look at the momentum that Sanders and Warren have as two of the top three candidates in the Iowa caucus, you see that the socialist is the message that they seem to, to be uh, really reflecting within their group of folks. And I think you'll hear a real contrast to that tonight from the president, talking about how free people, more prosperous in our country, looking forward to brighter economic futures, uh, really define the destiny of our country. Anything that you think that the president uh, needs to talk about that is a shortcoming, that, uh, that hasn't lived up to his campaign promises? 
Uh, I do believe that the president is going to call on Congress to do more on immigration. Uh, we've got 100 miles of wall built, more wall being built, but I think the president really needs to use the bully pulpit tonight to reflect on the fact that we could be doing a lot more to ensure that our border is secure, or we could have E-Verify in our country. And while we've seen historic deals to repatriate people who've come to our country illegally back in Central America, uh, we certainly could do more on immigration. I think that'll be a central focus uh, tonight. Somebody was telling me uh, recently we were we were remembering State of the Unions in years past, and we were remembering the time that it was that it was prom, and Republicans and Democrats chose a date. If you were we're so far from that right now, especially with the context of impeachment, if you were going to bring somebody, who would you invite? Oh uh, well, I'm giving I've got you an opportunity for bipartisanship. <laughs> Oh, oh, if I could invite any any potential Democrat yes. to the State of the Union? Yes, to be your date to the State hmm. of the Union. You know what? He doesn't hold all of my political views, but I might invite Vladimir Zelensky. I think he'd be a great guy to have in the State of the Union. He might not be as conservative as I am, but yeah, if I could have anybody, give me Zelensky tonight. All right, Florida Congressman Matt Gates, thank you so much.